soldiers and armed police patrol the woods, the region's walls sport angry-looking graffiti. Welcome to the Sousa Valley in Italy, where a transalpine rail tunnel project has some locals up in arms. The future Franco-Italian high-speed rail link from Turin includes a 57-kilometre long tunnel from here into the Morienne Valley in France and on to Lyon. We couldn't film in the exploratory tunnel that's already been carved out, such as the climate of mistrust that's developed here over years of resistance to the scheme. In fact, it was impossible to get pictures inside because of the high security. But Luca Giunti found us a narrow track through the mountains. He knows this terrain by heart. He's a park ranger and fiercely anti-tunnel. Il costo. The financial, energy and environmental costs are so high, it will never make money. The investment won't make a profit. Over the last 20 years, freight and passenger traffic between France and Italy has constantly declined. The Antis say the existing line is good enough, or could be upgraded, and are calling on the EU to withdraw its promised financial aid. Another major worry is the groundwater supply and the locals fears the construction will affect the water table, cutting their villages off. In the plans, tunnel building requires a thousand litres of water per second, or consumption equivalent to a city of one million people. The mayor of Sousa supports the project. After discussions with the project engineers, she feels the risks are manageable and the economic advantages will materialize. We hope that as soon as the governments have agreed, Sousa will get an international railway station and that will give the town a real chance of economic development. It's a position shared by Modane's mayor on the French side of the tunnel. Here it's the lorry that's the enemy. And the train is a blessing for the narrow valley and its fragile ecosystem. It will also help the chronically underdeveloped economy. What's important is finding work right now. This big project, for both of our valleys, will be a breath of fresh air for the next 10 to 15 years. The Lyon-Turin line is a key piece of the EU's planned high-speed rail network, say its supporters, a priority project linking Lisbon to Budapest and in the long term on to Kiev. A pipe dream, say people like Emmanuel Kou, who writes a French anti-tunnel blog. He argues the lack of cross-border traffic means no new line is needed, especially as the old one's just been modernized. When I hear people saying the old line's worn out, well, I don't know what to say, look at it. Some sections have been completely rebuilt as new, like this bridge, and a new line will be extremely expensive. 25 billion euros buys 500 new hospitals, and the French Public Accounts Committee has already established it won't make money. Despite the committee report, which slammed the project's costs spiralling in a decade from 12 to 26 billion, the president of the French rhone alpes region is all for it. And he's ready for a scrap. Trade is going to grow, not only between France and Italy, but Mediterranean and Danubian Europe. Today in France, only 10% of transalpine freight goes by rail. In Austria, it's 35%. And in Switzerland, it's 65%. Railways are the future, the future for safe trade. Back through the Fregius Tunnel to Italy to meet the Italian government's special commissioner for the Leon Turin project. He says the heavy work should begin in 2014, politics and finance permitting. The train is on Trains are competitive, cheap and profitable when they run on the flat, not in mountains. 
So you need a low-level tunnel. Today, trains have to climb 1,300 meters before going through, which needs three locomotives for each train. That's not competitive. The existing line was opened in 1871, three times steeper than the proposed new one and its low-level tunnel, and 60% more expensive to run than a sea-level line. Italy is France's second biggest economic partner, yet the access costs to its neighbours' markets are the highest in Europe. Patrick Mignola imports tiles from Italy. This French businessman set up near a ferroutage or rolling highway station in La Ravoie near Chambéry, but he doesn't use it. Why? We tried it a few years ago, but the system's not organized. There's not enough Franco-Italian traffic to drive it reliably. So, because there's not enough trade, no turin Leon high-speed line, no low-level tunnel, the transporters organize things accordingly. Tunnel supporters admit the transalpine traffic has dropped because of the economic crisis but insist mines should focus on 2025, when the tunnel is due to open, and new growth is no longer just a hope. Passengers will also appreciate the time savings. In 20 years' time, Lyon to Turin will take under two hours. Travel times from Paris to Venice or Milan to Barcelona will be halved. But back in one of the Sousa Valley's villages, Alberto, who's restored an old house and turned it into a bed and breakfast, agrees with the president of the mountain communities. The priority should be investment in anti-earthquake projects, schools or hospitals. It's like buying a Ferrari to nip down to the shops for some bread quicker. But when you get there, you've no money to buy any. That's what's wrong with this project. I don't think our economy can grow eternally. More, more, always more, more trade and quicker. But it doesn't work. On the French side, the access tunnels are already built. And the builders are raring to go. But for the hardcore Italian opponents of the project, it all boils down to one simple question. Will they accept the decision of the democratically elected and mandated French and Italian governments in the name of the public good? The answers are blunt. What democracy? They've drawn some lines on a map in an office somewhere and called that a democratic decision. Our rulers decide and we don't even get a say. We are the ones who live here. There are plenty of ways of opposing this tunnel. We can disrupt, set up roadblocks and pickets, stop the lorries going in and out of this building bunker they've built here. The plan is bitterly disputed and 800 million euros have already been spent. Will they be written off and the line abandoned? Or will it forge ahead? The coming months will be decisive for this European project.